welcome everyone to episode number i think it's the number four of the acr game plan here we are in the piranha plant tour i'm gonna have to stop keeping track of the numbers because it's just getting too crazy um but welcome to the piranha plant tour everyone i hope you're having a fantastic tour and i've got some friends with me today welcome flo how are you hi i'm fine happy to be here again awesome and we've got a very special guest today what is up john boy 88 how are you man I'm good, man. I appreciate you having me. Um, I'm glad I was able to make some time. You know, we have a busy, busy schedule, and I, I really looking forward to sitting down with you guys and see see what you do behind the scenes. You know. Yeah, man. It's so good to have you on, and um, yeah, thanks for coming and making the time. Um, I know we've got a pretty unique uh, three different time zones going on here, so it's first thing in the morning on a Saturday here for me in New Zealand flow it's friday evening for you and then uh it's uh friday in the middle of the day for you john boy so thanks thanks for being so uh accommodating um it's also funny because it's freezing cold here in the middle of winter and then for you guys it's it's maybe slightly warmer <laughs> yeah i'm wearing a t-shirt right now because yeah it's just i'm like i've got i've got the heater <laughs> on i've got my slippers on so you can just imagine you know my slippers right now they're um i'm just loving it i'm i'm sitting in the cool air conditioning because if i weren't i would be sweating to death probably <laughs> Awesome, guys. Hey, let's get into this episode. We're going to have a lot of fun. Um, but before we do, um, John Boy, why don't you tell us a little bit about why do you love ACR? What is it about ACR that gets you excited and that you enjoy? You know, you know, I, I, I really don't know. I think it's the rush you get when you get that good run, you know. And I like to be challenged in skill and, you know, it's really fun to dissect the track and then you know hit all the lines and get the perfect run and i've been doing it so long now i think <laughs> since the game came out and it's just at, at some point you get addicted to it i think you know i know there's a lot of people you know in the per game for oh this game sucks all oh, this game sucks oh, <laughs> you know they, it was got so much negative press, but you know, once you dive into it and actually you learn how the game functions, and you know, you get involved in the community like we have, and it's fun. And I enjoy sharing my knowledge and my passion for the game with everybody else. You know, and you know, awesome. that's the most rewarding thing for me right now is teaching people how to play the game. Well, I can personally say thank you for that, man, because you've been a huge um, help to me joining in the in the server recently. Um, so thank you, man. It's we, you know we really notice it in the community the the knowledge and the wisdom experience that you share. So I know it's just a game; it's a silly cartoon racing game. But at the end of the day, like we love this game, and um, you know we put a lot of time and effort and sometimes some cash as well into this game because we care about it. So um yeah thank you for for what you bring to the community man it means a lot and thanks for taking time to come and share some of your knowledge with us in this episode and you know that's how we keep it alive man we you know spread it to the next generation of racers that's it man all right let's get into this so um today's episode is going to be a really fun one we've got a lot of interesting stuff we've got our previous acr results where we're going to get to hear from Flo, who went for a top 100 run for the first time and i'm really excited to hear about what he learned and what he took away um and first and foremost um we've got some congratulations in order um uh, because uh you made it Flo. You must be stoked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll get into that in a minute. But um, we're also going to talk today about um, a resource or, or you know just a resource that we kind of have put together from a few different bits of information within the community. Some of this was information that came through Reddit and things like that. Um, but really, we want to uh, highlight action count strategy today and how can you get how can you maximize your action count for ACR. Um, we're going to go through the new courses and the plus skill driver buffs this tour and the Piranha Plant tour. We're going to go through the ACR projections and the plus skill distribution and tour hot list. So these are all resources which look at what's happening this tour. And if you're going for ACR, what are the items that you might want to look at? And, you know, how much coin box is there? How, how much other skills are there this tour? 
Um, we've got some changes to the ticket time algorithm today, and we're really excited. Um, Flo's been doing an amazing job, not only going for top 100, but also putting together some updates to how the ticket time tool works. Um, and it's, um, it's, it's really quite cool how it's going to change up the ranking slightly this tour. So we'll get to that as well. Um, we're going to go through uh, the ACR item upgrade rankings and then some account specific upgrade rankings. So, in, and uh, specifically, I'm excited to see John Boy's uh, best items to upgrade, and we can make some recommendations to him and we get a wee sneak peek into his account, which is really exciting. And then we'll go through some of our plans of what are we going to upgrade this tour. Um, so, let's get to it, guys. And first up, congratulations, Flo. Uh, sorry, this is my slide. Uh, First up, congratulations, Flo, for top 100. You achieved place number 70 for the first time. That's absolutely amazing, dude. How does it feel? Yeah, thank you very much. So I'm, I'm very relieved that it pans out everything in the end. So uh, I was very optimistic throughout the whole tour that it will work out because I knew the first pro projections from Rafid on the first day. And I knew, okay, it should be possible with 90% of, uh, of, of the score. So it's not too much and it should definitely be possible. Then, then of course, you need the run. So it was, uh, yeah, it, it's, it still needs some time to, to achieve the scores. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that it works out in the end. So um, take us through, um, I can see you've got some stats there and, and bits and pieces. So take us through, or maybe tell us first, like, um, what did you learn or what were your key takeaways from, um, from, the, from the tour and from the grind? Yeah, so one of the main takeaways is that, of course, it's a very huge difference between uh, something like 86% and then, uh, in this case, I achieved 91.5. So that's a jump or difference from, that's maybe 5% point. Really. It depends how much you go usually, but uh, this is massive. This is a completely different type of run because um, maybe something like 86, 87% is something like three good actions. We will come into that later. And I think John Boy will, can, can tell me, can tell us a lot of, a lot of, a lot about of that. Uh, um, it, for all the different items, but what you basically need is two good frenzies and then usually an additional coin box, an additional boom box, or like seven, whatever it is. Um, so it really takes some time until you hit that run. And if you want to achieve more than these 85%, uh, 86 something, uh, so the range close to 100, 95 upwards, you really need uh, two good frenzies, two additional coin boxes, whatever, or some lucky three frenzy runs. And this takes some time and it, yeah, it usually requires some hours of resetting and you just yeah need to be lucky to start with a good frenzy and then go through the race. And it takes really some time. Yeah, man. Um... I, th I think when I saw this sheet, I was really surprised at how many triple frenzy runs you had. Like you've got a triple coin run, you've got, you know, um, like your Bangkok rush with coin, double coin box um, frenzies. Like that's, that's pretty crazy to have that many um, triple, triple frenzy runs. And I know as you even get, get closer to 100%, you know, you're going to have to get triple frenzy runs. Um, take us through some of the stats you had. Yeah, so I just calculated some of stats because I thought it would be interesting to see what is necessary to go for a top 100. So uh, average number of frenzies, um, as you can see, there are only two tracks where I had just a single frenzy and this was uh, Wari Shipyard T, uh, where I could probably have done better, but um, it was quite a nice race and uh, I think it's fine enough. And then Coconut Multi, which was an amazing boombox and that's why uh, I also achieved the 200 actions there and did not revisit that. Even it was really a pain that you had this boombox frenzy in the very first box and then you don't get any other frenzies uh, later on. Uh, so on average, I think I had 16 races with uh, three frenzies. So that makes an average of 2.39. And then there are some other statistics below that might be interesting. So average action count of 172 of course you have some cheap cheap lagoons that's uh <laughs> that's uh, we have around 130 something like that so this is why it drops then um 
Then one thing that you can also see is different is the, the score. I achieved 91.5% of the estimated one, but on action count it is only 88.13. That's because we have uh, some, some differences. If you have an action count that is uh, estimated action count that is higher than 200, then uh, you do not need to go that high to achieve the same level of score. That's for, if you look at the coconut malt tea, for example, I have only a gain of 774 points. So uh, I achieved way more than just 85% of the, of the score. So that's an important dif the difference and, and uh, one of the takeaways as well. Then average score, something like 43K or 44K, and an average gain of 4K, that, that was one thing that I was planning the whole uh, tour with. So I, um, the basic schedule for me was I had 10 days and I wanted to do three races a day. And on three, this, three days, I just did six races and usually just three of the same race. So for example, all versions of Coconut Mall, something like that. I did the three races and tried to be on average below this gain of, uh, I think I, I calculated it with 4.5K. So, um, and that was my, uh, my approach to that. And the other is that you might already know if you look into your account, because that's the, just the list of the previous two. So races won 521 and this nonstop combo is uh, 126. So that's just to have an overview, what uh, was it about? Yeah, that's interesting. 521 races won to get 36 high scores, right? So that shows yeah. you. <laughs> I mean, obviously that will be collecting tokens and all sorts of things too. Um, and you had some more stats on this page here. Did you want to um, yeah, talk about anything on this page? Yeah, sure. So we have um, talked about what, what were the runs about, but then of course we also talked about the investments the last uh, video. But just to sum up what I, in the end, uh, invested because I skipped some of the investments or changed it a little bit. So in total, I had to spend 360 rubies to, uh, to, to get Daisy tie because it was an eighth tenor. Um, then I had to buy a lot of tickets. That's why I have uh, 95K coins uh, that I needed to invest. Um, it's might not be necessary to have that many coins, but then of course you need more tickets. And then what is very interesting is that I only, I would consider it as a low number, only level up 11 items for this tour, but a few of them were it's just huge events. So one of them is of course, uh, Daisy Tidress. So she went from one straight to seven triple cap. So um, that's one of the two drivers. The other one was Blue Cooper. And uh, then the other massive investment was then the, the gold wings also from one to seven triple cap. And you notice that on the right side as well. Uh, so the number of level tickets that I spent is roughly uh, 15 approximately for, for the high ends for all different types. And then um, just filling the gaps with the super tickets and normal tickets that you have. Um, so um, yeah, that's... That's what I leveled up. And then what I used in total are 49 items across the 36 tracks. And what is even more interesting is the number of items that I used more than once. And this is just eight for each different type. So eight drivers, eight cards, and eight gliders that I used more than once for this run. So you can really see if you focus on these, um, let's say eight or around 10, um, drivers, cards, and gliders, you can get really high scores and only fill the gaps with some lower level stuff on the other tracks. And then we have some items tickets. I spent around 100. Of course, you can spend more if you, if you, if you really want to force some good runs. Uh, I would have, uh, have had the option to, to spend more item tickets, but I think it, it was fine the way I did it. And grinding time, I'm not completely sure about that, but I would estimate it uh, something like one and a half hours per race, uh, more or less on average. So that this would be 55 hours in total, roughly. Really interesting, man. And those are those are some great stats. So super efficient is what stands out to me. How you know how efficient you were with your time and your resources. Um, so thanks for sharing, man, and congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. Big congrats, man.
I know the way the way the game is nowadays, with especially after level eight, this is, um, top one hundred is getting really starting to get harder and harder for a lot of people. So that's a big accomplishment, man. And we're if if something I did helped you, then I am <laughs> then my goal has been fulfilled per se. De definitely yeah, some inspiration on, on the OG server with some amazing runs and uh, yeah so I'm very glad to be there yeah I really enjoyed um, you know for those who um, aren't part of OG's um, Flo was sharing every day um, how his runs were going and kind of almost like a summary of his day and it was it was really interesting for me from the outside because I'm, I'm grinding myself but you know I, I'm not seeing Flo grinding um, on stream or anything like that and so then some days it's like yes I had a great day we got what we wanted and then other days it was like oh this is this is terrible you know like I've spent all this time and I haven't got anything but then just keeping on going and then you get there but you've got to be committed to it and you've got to put in the hours um, to get the result so um, really inspirational flow well done and that's another thing about being in the community is you know, sometimes this game is mentally taxing and draining, and it really helps. You know, you can have those that community support to fall back on, you know, and that's why we, you know, do our, you know, how we're in voice chat all the time in the server, and we're doing these runs and stuff. And that's why we do it because, you know, you can sit there and talk to the guy next to you who's on the same track, you know, grinding just like you are. And, you know, coaching each other along and, you know, that's kind of what, that's kind of the reason I'm still playing now because I, I, without the community and the people I've met along the way, I don't think I could suffer through what I've suffered through in the game, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> Too many blue shells. <laughs> oh my God, and shock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I think the community, I'm, I have I'm a, exactly I the have same. I have a single box, you know, you know, I have this single box and I'm like, okay, I know where I'm going to use this box. And right before I use it, I get shocked and I'm just livid. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, are you serious? Yeah, man. Yeah, the community is where it's at. Um, definitely if yeah. anyone's watching who's not involved, you know, especially in the Discord community, definitely um, yeah, flick us a message or send us a comment. We're happy to, you know, make sure you get involved. Um, all right, and um, just real briefly, here's my Bangkok tour results. I had a really fun tour. I keep telling myself I'm going to take a tour off and stop grinding, but then I don't because I just love it too much, which is funny. But I, I kind of was testing a little bit of my um, yeah ability to go for more like higher scoring runs. So I wasn't grinding XP or tokens intentionally at all this tour. I was more just focusing on how high I can score. Um, it's quite evident to me that um, the time commitment needs to be greater to go for top 100. I wasn't going for top 100, but certainly with the runs that I got, I would have needed a much higher estimate to, to have any any chance at that um, because, as you can see, I only got to 85.9. So, you know, it's, um, it was also, uh, there was some tracks on it that I really didn't enjoy, <laughs> like the Cheap Cheap Islands. So I just did not put the time in on, on some of those tracks. Um, but I did have some really, really cool runs. And I'll uh, tell you a little bit more about the Bangkok Rush uh, run that I got um, shortly. I've got a screenshot in a couple of slides time. Um, but yeah, it's uh, there were some really fun runs um, and some really fun items to use. Quite a bit of coin box as well. Um, but yeah, I, I had a fun tour and um, I achieved my first top 200. So I'll take that as a win. It's good to see you self personal goals, even if, those goals aren't, you know, really, really uh, difficult goals, something to keep you moving forward um, so that you can keep improving on your game, I think is really key. <clears throat> and that was well, with no tickets um, spent, so I'm happy with that. No tickets spent, yeah. Um, well, you did earn yourself a new role in the Discord server, by the way, if you haven't noticed. Yes. No, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's, and it's, flow, flow as well. Flow as well. Flow got his uh, top yeah, 100 yeah. role. So. Awesome. Nice Congratulations. Well earned. Well earned. Yeah, yeah. Even if um, the game doesn't give you a reward, then someone in the community will recognize it. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's good. 
All right, guys, um, let's get into our into this um, resource highlight today. So the resource that we want to highlight is really just to have a conversation between us around action count strategy. Now, there's a lot of misinformation and different understanding about how things and mechanics work in this game, but we want to talk about some of the mechanics to make sure that what we know and what we uh, what we do as is something that's just a normal thing that we do is um, shared with the community um, and that next generation of players coming through. Um, because the reality is, uh, you know, some of the stuff that we do seems really obvious to us, but for people who are new in the community, they might not have even considered some of the um, ways of playing this game. I know that when I first um, got involved in the Frenzy Band server and then met John Boy and um, jumped on some of his Mr. Miyagi Drift School streams, uh, which are, by the Shameless way, make sure you, there, right? yeah, <laughs> got to get involved, guys. It's, a, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, but even some really obvious things um, like how to when to release the coin box um something as fundamental as that i didn't even consider um really much at all until um until i saw someone do it much better than i was um so um we're gonna look, go through some questions we just can have a conversation as we go through we've got some um things to talk about and some slides to look at um so um just the questions i want to pose are why does action count matter and what are some ways of key ways of increasing your action counts and what's the difference between a good and a great run to flow's point before about the the time you've got to put in for top 100 um and how can i get more of the right frenzies so just uh, for a start um if you have a look at this uh table on the right here this is a um a frenzy probability uh image which was created by i think it was er curtis and shared through the frenzy fan server and that was made through some information through data mining which was shared on reddit and, and kind of summarized um so you can see straight away that um your lap one and your lap two frenzy percentage chances will vary and they'll also vary depending on the position that you are in when you hit an item box so for those who are newer you might have noticed that if you drop back to eighth place and you hit the item box, you'll probably get a mushroom frenzy or a mega mushroom frenzy, which we hate those. Um, but, you know, that's because the frenzy chance is just so much higher when you're in eighth place. So a lot of the time you will roll that frenzy and you can use that knowledge to your advantage. Maybe you're, um, maybe you're uh, grinding a, a, a non-plus skill driver and you want to hit the first box in seventh or eighth place to see if you can roll that mushroom frenzy, boost up to first place and then front run for the coin frenzies. So that's, you know, um, that, th these are valid strategies that you might use to try to maximize your action count depending on what the skill is. Um, so then when we get into the plus skills, we've got a section here on coin box um, and you'll see that, um, you know, uh, actually that kind of third through fifth place tends to be a, a nice sweet spot to roll coin box frenzies. Um, but having a coin box frenzy in fifth place where a bot's stealing all your coins might not be ideal as well. So there's a balance to these things. Um, um, for Boomerang, you know, there's a real sweet spot in that fifth fifth place or fourth or fifth place to roll a Boomerang frenzy um, when you're boomboxing. So that means that the, uh, the coin box bot has to be ahead in front of you. And then for lucky seven, you'll see that there's a sweet spot again around that sixth or seventh place um, to roll a, a lucky seven frenzy. So guys, what are your thoughts when we look at these questions and when we look at um, where we're kind of hitting that, what, what are your initial thoughts before we get into the actual um, strategies per skill? Go ahead, John. Oh, excuse me. Um, I mean, I mean, I can see where a newer player would find this mind boggling <laughs> to realize, you know, because I remember uh, being a day one player. I remember when none of this stuff existed. Uh, we didn't even know what action count was or why it was important. Like for like the first six months of the game, nobody had a clue because everybody thought it was just frenzy based on the frenzies you got. And if you got a double coin frenzy, like back in the day, you were the man, you know? And <laughs> we, okay. And we were in a server and one of the servers I used to be a part of. And we were, we were having discrepancies over 
okay, I got this run, but my score was higher than I got this run, but my score was lower. And we were trying to figure out, okay, what's going on here? There's something going on where the scores aren't matching. I get the same run with the same frenzies and the scores are different. So what, what's going on? Something's weird happening here, you know? So we started figuring out about the action counts and then then people started digging into the files of the game and data mining and oh here's the formula for how this works and action count actually is the only metric in the game that actually matters action count is everything it literally is half it's either two-thirds to a half of your score is based on your action count alone the other half is your driver carts, gliders, your level, and your base points, because all of that is multiplied together at the end of the race to get your final score. And once people figured that out, we started doing everything we could to squeeze as many actions out of a race as possible. And here we are today, and here we are. basically, <laughs> it's, it's, it's common knowledge to most older players you know if you've been playing the game for a year two years then this is all common knowledge but if you're just starting out you're like huh what you can do that that's that's how it works you know so yeah i mean yeah. and there's there's some things on here that aren't covered that i would like to bring up a little bit later and the biggest thing that people are doing or not doing is the amount of mini turbos you are performing in a race is like could potentially add up to 10 to 20 extra actions in one race. If you're doing your, if you're chaining your mini turbos properly and the way we learned, you know, when I first started playing the game, how to keep combo. And this is what we used to do. We used to go on a new, if we get a new track, we'd go on the track with the lowest level glider we possibly get. And then we would learn how to full combo with the low level glider because you build up a muscle memory, like a mental timer in your head when your combo is gonna run out. So you basically keep doing those mini turbos as fast as possible to keep your combo going. And Bless, once you level up your glider, you still have that, even though you have a longer window to keep your combo, in your head, it's still shorter because you're used to the low level glider. So you're still doing the mini turbos as fast as you would before, even with the low level glider, even if you level it up to seven and you have the extra time. So, but if you learn the track with the high level glider and you're extending your mini turbos further, you're doing less of them. So you're losing maybe five to six actions per lap just because you're not doing as many mini turbos as somebody else would with a lower level glider. Dropping if you facts. know what I mean. Dropping facts, man. It's so good. Um, all right. So let's get into this, guys. So um, what are some key ways of increasing your action count? So um, let's cover off the basics here and then we can have a bit of a conversation as we go through. So Firstly, this um, slide is all about coin box. Uh, it's worth, you know, we need to know coin box well when it comes to this game because as Flo learned last week, uh, last tour, <laughs> um, coin box is everywhere. Um, so basically it was, a, it was coin box tour last tour. Um, and there are some real challenges um, when it comes to coin box. Um, things like the item box being near the finish line. So you get a coin box frenzy, but you don't collect half the coins or you release the coin box, single coin box too late. Um, what uh, John calls ear box frenzies, which is uh, job boy, do you want to tell us what an ear box frenzy is? <laughs> okay, we have a prime example of the perfect air box track this story. It's Rainbow Remix Rainbow Road 1. Um, this coin box track, you have like three coin box drivers on it. If you get a coin box frenzy or a single box and you're in a glider section and all your coins just fall into the abyss and you don't <laughs> get any of them, that is what we like to call an air box frenzy. It's totally useless. It does nothing for you. I don't care what you do in the air to try to collect the coins. They're just going to fall <laughs> wherever they're going to fall and then you're going to get nothing. And you're going to be like, I got a coin box frenzy. Hell yeah. How many coins did you get? They're all gone. <laughs> it's even worse than a mega mushroom frenzy somehow oh 
<laughs> yeah, no, no, no joke, because you're only getting the frenzy action and nothing else. Anyway, I'm going to mute myself and I will return just in a second. Okay, guys? Yep, no if worries. Like we'll continue, continue on. I will, uh, I will be right back. No worries. Um, yeah, so um, a lot of people don't know this, but gravity actually affects the coin box with the coins coming out. So if you're going up a hill, um, then the coins fly up. So the probably the most um, prevalent example of this is Merry Mountain when you go up the hill and you release mm -hmm. your coin box and they all go up the hill and you don't catch them. They all fall behind you or they all fall around you and you don't get any of them. No. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, curve, curves affect collecting coins as well. So, you know, you release it um, on the wrong part of the track and all the coins go over the fence and you don't get any of them. Uh, lightning shrinks you and you can't collect as many coins or the bots steal your coins you know um, so there's there's a lot of challenges when it comes to coin box so what we want to think about is how do we maximize that and minimize the I guess the, those challenges um, so here we go so here's some strategies we think um, will help you so firstly grinding out the boat bots so you can take optimal lines this is really key because um, if you can front run and still get those coin boxes and coin box frenzies or coin frenzies, um, then you'll be able to take the optimal line to collect the most coins without the bots getting in your way, stealing your coins or making you slow down or miss, you know, jumps and other action counts or coins on the track. You know, even things like turning really hard and going across a jump to get as many coins as possible. These are really important strategies to maximize your action count. Um, when it comes to releasing coin box, there's a few kind of basic principles you want to do. So releasing coin box on straightaways makes a lot of sense. And then even better if it's when you're going downhill. What happens when you go downhill is the coins fall differently according to gravity in the game. And that means that you, they'll fall right in front of you and you'll be able to collect a lot more of them. Um, releasing coin box on gradual curves. So ones that aren't really tight curves, but are more gradual ones where you can follow the line of the coins where they fall to collect as many as possible. Um, or releasing a coin box when you crash or slow down, maybe hitting a Goomba on purpose and releasing the coin box at the right moment so that a bunch of coins all fall in the same place. Um, and um, lastly, releasing the coin box before the next item box. So this is a little bit, uh, I guess, speculative but what i've found is that if you release the coin box um uh, after or at the next item box you won't roll another single box so it, it tends to be best to release it earlier because that guarantees that you could still get another single coin box on the next box um whereas there's yeah there's anecdotal evidence that i've found personally and others have found in the community which shows that um, if you hold your uh, coin box all the way to the next item box, you won't roll another single coin box, even if you, you know, you might roll another coin box frenzy. Um, and the same applies with uh, bots. So for example, you'll find that if these other coin boxes in your lobby, it's not very conducive because if they pick up a single coin box, you won't be able to, um, even if you can pick up the coin box frenzy. Um, and then lastly, hopping and collecting red coins is, is, is a focus. So the goal or the sequence that we're looking for when it comes to coin box is something like this. Uh, on the first item box, we want something like a coin box frenzy, which is course dependent. So in the case of, say, Mushroom Gorge, uh, I think it's Mushroom Gorge, the standard Mushroom Gorge, you will get an air box frenzy if you get coin box frenzy on the first box. So in that case, you want to roll one probably on the second item box, which is very nice. You're going down a down a hill, uh, around a gradual curve, and there's lots of open space, so you should be able to get a lot of the coins in there. Um, and then from there, what you want to do is you want to alternate between every item box getting a single coin box, and then the next one getting a frenzy, either coin frenzy or coin box frenzy, and then alternating back and forth till the end of the race. That would be what we call a perfect run. That would be a great run, and that would maximize your action count. So um, just to flex a little, I got a world record on Bangkok Rush R. And so you can see my images there, which was a run with 241 actions, which for that course was very good. I was averaging maybe about 160 with a solid run, 170, something around there, which was actually pretty, pretty good already. Um, but this run was absolutely crazy. It was a uh, single coin box, uh, then coin box frenzy, then single coin box, then coin box frenzy, then single box, then coin box frenzy, all the way to the end of the race. So I got three full coin box frenzies. I got single boxes on every box apart from one. 
and um, finished the race in first. So I was front running. Uh, it was, it was, you, you can see I've got zero bot hits based on the amount of tokens I collected. So this was a crazy run. It blew my mind when it happened. I've never had anything like that happen to me before, but it just showed the possibility and why we say coin box is king, because you can get crazy amounts of actions um, off coin box if you have the right circumstances play out. So guys, what are your thoughts on coin box? What are your thoughts on what I'm saying here? And what would you add? You know what? You're absolutely right, and you nailed it. But there, there's a couple of other things I would like to add about the coin box and how you collect them. Um, I have noticed where on the track you release the coin box matters. Um, say, I know a lot of people um, like to use it like on a straight and just drive straight. That's why the hitbox of the cart matters, so you can just drive straight and just collect all the coins. But I have noticed there's like a weird effect with the coin boxes, depending on where you're at on the track. Like if you're in the center of the track or to either side, if you're in the center, like say you're on toad circuit and you're driving down the straightaway and you just release the coin box in the middle of the track, the coins will spread out in a V pattern on both sides. Interesting. And you'll just go straight in between the, the spray of coins. But I've noticed if you're on the edge of the track, like right next to the invisible wall, the coins will kind of fall back into the racing lane instead of outside of it. And you'll collect more coins that way if you're going on a straightaway. Now, it's better to do it while you're in like a gradual curve and use the, like you said, use the terrain of the track to your advantage. Uh, like, say bowser's castle reverse um who you have a world box, record on that track don't you man <laughs> yes i do because um i got that that fabled perfect run you were speaking of earlier nice. uh, i think it was in new year's tour it was it was a triple frenzy triple box Same, i think it was man. two box frenzies a coin frenzy and three single boxes <laughs> and it was absolutely insane but there are points on that track where you want to release your coin box because there's a gradient and a curve and it goes downhill. And if you're, you want to try to make your arc as wide as possible. That way the coins, as you're turning, the coins are falling into the line of your drift. And you're literally collecting every single coin that comes out because it takes some practice, you know, to figure out where the coins are going to fall. But once you start predicting, you have to pre kind of predict where the coins are going to go and then kind of follow that pattern uh, as you drift around the curve and you will just fall right in. Line. It's, it's a beautiful thing once you perfected it and it will substantially increase the amount of coins you collect from the coin box. Man, we appreciate Man. you dropping this knowledge on us. You're you're definitely the the coin box sensei. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't say I'm the best at it, but there's some know, there's some I amazing like to, people in the community. Yeah, when it comes to this, definitely. I mean, I've seen I've seen some really broken stuff, and I've learned from over my time in the game. I've learned from the, some of the best drivers on how to collect, and I'm just here to pass on the knowledge you know awesome man all right we're going to carry on guys um just in the interest of time unless flo you wanted to add anything on the coin box front yeah maybe maybe one short thing so um we already had that so it's nice if you have not that many pace if you were collecting uh, a coin box so one thing that you can avoid is then of course dash panels and then sometimes you are lucky to hit a goomba or for example now that we have coconut mall with uh, a coin box driver, uh, Daisy Tidress, you can just go there, the uh, escalators, which go in the wrong direction, spread the coin box there, collect them all because you're just uh, slower and then it's just falling behind you. So that's also an important point besides of uh, gradual curves, as hitbox and so on. Very good. Nice. All right, let's talk about boomerang and boomboxing in particular. 
Um, so this one's a little bit more straightforward. Um, so basically we wanna reset the lobby till we have one or two, you know, uh, tier two coin box bots who are front running. So if it's a, like, you know, on the second shelf, that means they should be able to get two items, which means you're increasing your chances that they pick up a coin box. Um, and we need bots that are aggressive. So what we mean by that is that they are front running, they're they are pushing to the front. Even sometimes you'll get one that starts in the back, but immediately pushes straight to the front. And that's ideal because it shows that they are going to take more aggressive lines. You know, they probably have a badge um, on that bot. And that means that you'll be able to stay behind them. Um, we want to hit the boxes in somewhere between fourth to sixth place. I tend to find sixth place pretty good for boomerang frenzies, though your mileage may vary. And then we want to monitor the coin box bot. So you're looking at your screen going, have they got a box? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then of course you need to get the boomerang frenzy. So this is where the really the luck and the RNG comes in and then reset, reset, reset. What I find with boom boxing is if you get a good lobby, you'll see they get a coin box and release it almost every single time. And that's a great sign to keep that lobby. And then you just need to wait till you get the boomerang and they get the coin box at the right point. Um, and that tends to be really good. What I find is you, if you get into a position where you're in a, a lobby where they're, they're just not using their boxes or they're not getting boxes, then try a different lobby can be a good safe bet to, to kind of do after you've maybe spent you know, 10, 20 minutes on that. Um, I recommend not grinding down the bots too much unless they're really, really aggressive or it's a course where they're all taking really tough lines and you're struggling um, to finish in first place. And then in terms of the sequence we're looking for, either uh, ideally we on the first or second box, we get a boom box frenzy. So they get the coin box, we get the boom, boomerang frenzy. And then we uh, pick up all those coins, get as many actions. You know, you're talking like, can be anywhere from like 40 to... 100 actions maybe like 80 actions um in that first frenzy because you're hitting all the bots you get collecting all the coins um the bots that are getting hit are releasing coins and then you're picking up those coins as well um, and then from there there's two options uh either we can front run for coin frenzies to make sure that we finish in first place or the risky variant to that is to further stay behind the coin box and go for a second boom box uh, before maybe then trying to get to the front and, and front running maybe for a third frenzy like a coin frenzy um so this run here is um john boy's uh run on bangkok uh no uh piranha plant uh t uh, sorry piranha plant slide t um and that's a world record run that you set yesterday john boy congratulations yeah I was actually in VC with the guys when I did that, and I wouldn't even expect it. It came out of nowhere. I was like, oh, I'm just going to, because I had a, I had a level one Volendam on this track, and I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't live with it. I had a few tickets, so I upped her to five, then capped her just nice. for this track. So I'm like, okay, let's do some test runs, see how it goes. And I immediately get a three coin box lobby. I think I had uh, Kamek, I had Party Time Pauline, and I think uh, Daisy in there. And I had the, uh, I think Daisy and Kamek were starting in first and second, and I think there was another coin box driver in the back somewhere, and I was starting at like six. So I'm like, okay, this is perfect. Now, to your point, there are some things that or what we call i call it pre-programmed where if you go into a lobby and you see a pattern of things happening that's because it's programmed to happen the the bot is always going to take the same lines they're always going to get the same items from item boxes every the only difference in the algorithm for what happens in a race is the player input so if you do nothing and let the bots do whatever they're going to do, then the RNG is always going to be the same. The only thing that affects the RNG is your what you do in the lobby. So if you fall back and the bots go ahead of you, you've essentially affected the RNG because of, like we've discussed before, your placement when you go through the box determines what items you get. So if the bot always goes through the box, say in third or fourth place, and you see they get a coin box, then chances are they're probably going to get a coin box every single time you reset the lobby, or at least a majority of the time, because it's already programmed in. Once you enter the race, this is what's going to happen. 
and that goes for blue shell shocks, you know, the stuff that you don't like. So if you notice you're getting shocked a lot in a lobby, you're getting blue sh shelled a lot in a lobby, you might want to find another lobby. Find another lobby. It's gonna, yeah. <laughs> it's, I, I, I watched a video on YouTube like a couple of years ago where this guy recorded, I think it was on Ghost Valley Reverse, like SNES Ghost Valley Reverse, and he would get blue shelled at the exact same moment every single race. He would get blue shelled <laughs> in the exact same spot. Like it happened to him like ten times in a row, <laughs> and then I was on a I was on a track, I think it was DK Pass Reverse. You know how you have that line of coins coming around the bend before you go up the glide. Well, there was this bot in my race, and he would always get in front of me and get all the coins, and I'm like, come on, man. So every <laughs> time I reset the lobby and tried to get in front of this bot. He would literally every single time get in front of me and get all the coins, and I would be so mad. So I just reset the lobby <laughs> after about thirty minutes of struggling to get the coins because they're stealing the action count. You know? Yeah, that's working smarter, oh, yeah. not harder. Yeah. So yeah, I think the lobby does matter. I've, I'm sure Flo, you've found the same thing that you know the lobby. You you almost have to like it's hard to describe because you almost have to like feel out what's happening and just observe and, and sit back and, and if it's not feeling right or it's not working for you then then try something different and that goes into the acr grinding in general and a big part of grinding for top 100 especially and people that go for top 10 is if you don't have the time like it, we're busy adults we have lives we have jobs kids all that stuff if you don't have the time to grind you know these ridiculous amount of time then you really need to start managing your time and if you're wasting your time on a lobby that's not producing what you want it's probably best to get another lobby because you're just going to sit there and waste more time not getting the run and getting frustrated and then you just want to put the game down after that and that's a really hard thing to do especially when you're trying to get the run and you're you know, in the game and, you know, I got to get it, I got to get it. But, you know, you're just beating your head against the wall. At some point, you're going to have to, something's going to have to give and you're going to have to try something else because what you're trying is not working. Yeah, man. So, it, you know, I would sit in a lobby. I would do like 10 restarts in one lobby and basically see what the bots are doing. I'm like, okay, this is what this bot's doing, blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay, this will work. Or after 10 resets, okay, I'm not getting the box. I'm not getting the boomerang or he's not getting the box. Okay, I'm just going to reset the lobby. And then try again, maybe do another 10 restarts and see if you can see a pattern of what the bot's doing. You know, okay, the bot's staying in first. Okay, he's getting, he's literally, you could have a runner bot stays in first but he gets hit after the first box and he's in last it's like, oh well there he goes he just died yeah. you know <laughs> then he then he's in last place the rest of the race so yeah and you're not getting coin you know, boxes in of, last place so yeah you're not so yeah, that, that's my top tip for you know the rng based stuff it is a little bit of pre-programmed in the code what you're going to get in a lobby so you know feel out a lobby do about 10 restarts in that lobby if you're not getting the frenzy or they're not getting the box within about 10 restarts then try a new lobby it's good man thanks for dropping the knowledge on us this is um all really good stuff let's keep moving on Flo. um anything to add i think that's the point resetting yeah. lobby and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, especially with Boomerang, it's very time consuming. So you've got to manage your time, like John Boy said. Um, and then just real quick, um, Lucky Seven and Giant Banana. The strategy here is pretty simple. It's to generate as many bot hits as possible, whereas the other two were about collecting as many coins as possible. So in this case, um, we do things slightly different. So if it's Lucky Seven, we're going to bag, which means to slow down to control the bots, the, the, the order that they go through the item boxes and the order that you go through. So in this case, we want to hit the item boxes in fifth to seventh place, somewhere in that um, sweet spot. Fourth place can, you know, and even second place and third place can roll Lucky Sevens too. So it's quite a forgiving 
I guess, skill. But then the challenge is um, if, if you hit it in second place, you've got to then bag immediately to get behind the bots to then get the hits with the bloopers and the um, and the super horns, which is our aim. John Boy. Okay. Um, the thing is, is you can only get lucky sevens in second, third, or fourth on lap two. Ah. Interesting. Not on lap one. Yeah. Um, the, the frenzy rates, like you said, me mentioned in a previous slide, frenzy rates and item percentages change in lap two. So I think lap one, you can't get it in like second place or something, or it's very, very, the, the, the chance is really low, but in on lap two, the chance is actually a lot higher and you get a lot more second place lucky sevens and single lucky sevens in second place. But that's not really ideal because like you said, it's with the mushroom going and stuff, it's really hard to slow down enough to get the bots back in front of you and then if they yeah. are trying to get in front of you, you're just killing them with a super horn anyway. <laughs> and then you're still ahead of them. And yeah. another thing, uh, what works really well with like Lucky 7 Boomerang skill, and there's a track this tour, uh, the new Piranha Plant slide has a respawn where you fall. If the Usually this will work if there's an item box at the edge of a glider ramp. Uh, like on Piranha Plant side, the last item box is at the edge of the glider. And what you'll do is if you run into the wall and fall into and get respawned, you will respawn back behind the item set so you can roll the item set again. Yeah, man, and then those also multi box that, strategies are, are, are really key. And then with Lucky Seven, that's even better because. One, it helps you get back behind the bots, and two, it furthers your increases your chances of getting lucky sevens. So it does two things. Yeah. Um. So. And, and you. And sorry. Go that, ahead. Uh, which one was it? Uh, Wario Shipyard Reverse. Ideally, you want to respawn with a frenzy and then roll the box again, so you get the frenzy and you get the extra box. Nice because man. if you, I think on glider respawns, you can do it up to three times and then it'll respawn you at the next um, section of the track. But ideally, you don't want to do it, have to do it multiple times because it's hard to catch up after that because you're so far behind at that point. And once you're in eighth, you're not really going to get lucky sevens. You'll get mushroom frenzies, mega mushrooms. You might get lucky and get a shock but or a bullet bill which obviously those kill your kill your combo immediately because you don't get action for using the bullet bill unfortunately that's good but man i think that's about i think that's about all i have for lucky seven yeah that's good um so the sequence here that we're looking for ideally is you know first second box you get a lucky seven frenzy and then you really want to alternate boxes similar to the coin box uh in this case but you want single lucky sevens to fill in those action counts and then um you know get a second lucky seven frenzy or then front run for you know two coin frenzies um and i think um you know your single lucky sevens can add quite a lot of actions but the key here is you have to be behind the bots to get those blooper hits. So sometimes lucky seven can be lower action count purely because you're just not, you're not just generating enough bot hits with that. Um, and then giant banana is very similar. Um, front running is key. You'll get those ban giant bananas in, you know, those kind of starting positions, first, second, third place. Um, and you can, of course, roll coin frenzies as well, which is a good complement to the giant banana strategy. Um, the key here with giant banana is getting the right sequence. So in the case of Piranha Plant Slide, which John Boy was just mentioning, uh, one thing I noticed is if you can get a giant banana frenzy on the first box, you're going to destroy those bots right at the start of the race because they're all in a very tight, narrow section. Um, and they'll be all hitting the bananas and then you'll get so far ahead that then you can do the multi-box strategy and they're way behind so if you can get those um, giant banana frenzies on the first lap that also guarantees that you'll get the second lap bot hits um, and then you've got 
way more room to work with to you know focus on your lines and get some um get some good action counts i find giant banana way easier if you get the right sequence to get high action counts uh than, than some of these other strats flo would you add anything on the lucky seven front or the uh, giant banana um not really but maybe to wrap also the the whole um plus skill action count strategy up so the, the basic idea is then of course um, you also have other skills, but for the other skills, you usually aim for coin frenzies. And what we talked about now are several options where you can increase your action count with other frenzies more than coin frenzies. So that's why if you have a lucky seven frenzy, you should really have that many hits so that there are more actions than with a coin frenzy. In this case, they're also worth more because a hit is always worth more than a coin. And the same holds for giant banana. So you're just collecting that many hits. They give massive points. Uh, now that this tool also, we have a little change in the glider. So now banana gliders also give bonus points for the bananas that uh, spread from giant bananas if, if they're hit. So um, that's, that's the basic idea be behind the action count strategy for the four plus skills. All right, guys, just in the interest of moving on with time, we'll keep moving on. Uh, we've got a few slides to get through. Um, so let's keep moving on and we'll get into the new courses this tour. So three very high action count courses, all to over 200 actions. Um, Piranha Plant Slide T, um, as we talked about with that boomerang run that John Boy got, um, massive, massive high scoring uh, track there. Um, we've got Coin Box, um, Boomerang, on the Prana Plant Slide R. And then we've got um, Prana Plant Slide, the standard version, uh, the normal version, we've got uh, both uh, Giant Banana and Boomerang there. So a lot of plus skill options there. Um, and a sh special shout out to Party Time Pauline for the buff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's two buffs she's gotten this tour. I mean, this, uh, this year, Koopa Cape was her first buff this yeah. year. No, 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 no. I lied. She's gotten three buffs this year. Uh, you're talking about Sp Spain. Singapore. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Singapore, uh, Koopa Cape, and now Piranha Plant Slide. So she's gotten three buffs. Yeah. Um, and then going into the new plus skill drivers, do you want to go through this flow? Yeah. Um, maybe if you can go back to the slide before, I just want to say Sorry. one. Uh, one thing, um, because this will also be relevant when we go the, to our uh, upgrade rankings later. One important thing to note is that we have uh, on the glider selection on the perennial plant slide and the perennial plant slide R, we have almost the same gliders. So as you can see, we have the candlelight flight, we have the Sakura dynamic glider, we have the tulip corsage, the eight, the one up eight bit mushroom, and also the new piranha. Uh, glider. So five options to cover those two tracks. Um, so just make sure that you have one of these <laughs> that covers both of the track. And uh, in my case, I don't have any of them. Now I now have the Piranha <laughs> Plant Glider. So, uh, that's that's important to to just keep a look at. So if you have one of these sliders, you're fine. You can level it up. Uh, if you have multiple of those, then maybe just choose one of them to level up. Nice, man. That's really interesting. And it's probably out of the ordinary for Nintendo to buff it that way. Um, but because these are assumed value tracks, that's going to be uh, boost those items a lot in the rankings as we go through. Cool, man. Take us through the plus skill driver buffs. Uh, sorry, the yeah. new plus skill drivers. The new plus skill drivers. Yeah, that's what we forgot last time. So we talked <laughs> a lot about Tide Maze, but then didn't add them to the slides. And uh, yeah, a, a huge shout out to Larry98 because I was just chatting with him two hours before re recording and thought about how to, to add the slides. And he just uh, decided, well, I can just create something for you. So this is really fresh, completely new created images. So thank you very much, Larry. And um, of course we have two new boomerang drivers so that's why we have a closer look at them. Um, PD Piranha, um, probably most interesting track, of course, Piranha Plant Slide. If you don't have uh, Pink Shiga Ninja, then he's, uh, I think, the only plus skill driver there. Um, on Piranha Plant Slide R, you have multiple options that we have seen. Um, there are some coin boxes. And then probably the most interesting tracks for him, uh, Bowser's Castles R is very nice to boombox. You have a lot of mid-shelf coin boxes there. 
Uh, and then there are some Yoshi Circuit, Yoshi Circuit T, which are not uh, that popular with uh, high end, uh, with plus skill drivers. Um, and also Ghost Valley 1RT, which is in rank next week, might be interesting to Boombox because we uh, this is a very short track. So if you find a very nice Boombox friends there, then you're already done. So I think it's a nice starting selection for PD Piranha. And then we have the PD Piranha Me racing suit, which has some overlap. So we also see the Bowser's Castles R, the Piranha Plant Light R, the Ghost Valley 1RT. Uh, Sky Garden T, we have uh, Kangaroo Yoshi and um, Vacation Luigi also already as Boomerang drivers, so that's probably not too interesting. Yoshi Circuit R has Volendam as well. Priyana, Priyana Plant Slide T, Volendam as well. So, um, yeah. Interesting stuff. The, yeah. the way you can obtain this, of course, by rank. So if you don't have the other options, then it might be worth it. But uh, let's see how this continues to get buffed. Cool, man. And then we've got the plus school buffs. You want to go through yeah, those? So, sure. So we have some interesting buffs here. We have uh, two drivers that get uh, got three buffs, which are Daisy Tidress. Uh, she got Piranha Plant Slide R, which is a nice buff if you don't have uh, <laughs> the uh, Pauline, part time Pauline leveled up or PD Piranha or whatever. Uh, and then we have two uh, uniques for her as, as coin box driver, Calimari Desert T and uh, Choco Island 2T. Uh, the latter one, I'm not really sure if it's that good for coin boxing. I didn't find the track yet, but um, nevertheless, I think it's nice to have this, those unique tricks that's better than some of this. And then Rosalina Chef, I think the Sky Garden buffs are pretty nice. Um, might help some people out there. And in general, um, yeah, of course, it's always interesting to see the gold me racing suit buffs and the question mark luck me racing suit buffs as, as those are the drivers that have the highest point po uh, potential. And um, I, I think that's, that's it. Nothing very special to mention here, I think. Cool, man. Um Looking at the ACR projections, so we've got our top 10 at 1.91, top 100 at 1.58, and then top 1,000 at 1.23. Uh, either of you guys, what are your goals this tour? Are you, uh, I don't imagine, Flo, you're going to go for another top 100, <laughs> right? What about you, John Boy? Um, I've been working on some other things the past couple of tours, so I haven't really been doing too much grinding. Like I said before, I'm trying to get the multiplayer team going uh so i'll probably just casually you know play around on some tracks have some fun uh set some world records you know just <laughs> yeah <laughs> just just, 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 just the one just oh, casual I'm not going for, yeah, I, yeah I'm, not, I'm not going for acr uh just randomly has top 100 yeah um, um i no, like the badge a, this a, tour yeah, a nice yeah, badge. badge I was going to take a break, but I think I have to get the top 1,000 badge. <laughs> Sweet, guys. Yeah. Let's, let's then, move. You know, oh, that's, sorry, that's, go, go that's ahead, the Flo. thing about that, that's the thing about the game, though. Every time you just said, oh, I'm going to take a break, they just throw something in your face. <laughs> oh, man, I got to have that. <laughs> yeah. they, they, they know their customer base too well. Yeah. I, I just wanted to to quick a shout out to Rahid and uh, Nidinho because I forgot to do it earlier when uh, I was talking about my top hundred run. So of course, uh, this is a massive help. So uh, thank you, Rahid, for providing those projections for the top one hundred because they really helped me. And he also did an additional one just on the very last day because there was uh, um, yeah some some jumps going on and I wasn't completely sure if I'm fine. And he just posted an additional one. Uh, so thanks to you. And then also thank uh, you to uh, Nidinho who does that for top 1000 and uh, who was also going for top 100 just the previous tour and helped me also with some uh, tracks. And uh, yeah, thank to you both guys. You were uh, a big help. And besides my girlfriend, who was also doing a lot of stuff around when I was just grinding. So <laughs> trying to show all of you very understanding <laughs> awesome yeah no thank you guys all right let's carry on and get into this tours um how, how this tours looking for some of these 
plus skills. So we've got the ideal distribution of plus skills over there on the left. So lots of coin box, 56% coin box, huge amount of boomerang tracks, 33%, which is insane. Only 8% are lucky seven and 3% giant banana. Um, and as you can see with both mine and flows, they're a little bit, probably a little bit more balanced. Um, uh, flow, you've got probably a little bit more um, tie, uh, tie daisy uh, leveled up there, which will be the discrepancy there. And then meanwhile, I've got a pinger on those tracks, I imagine, which will be why giant bananas showing up there. Um, so any comments on that? Pretty not really. I think it's novel to it. Yeah. Yep. Pretty standard. Cool. And then we've got our tour hot list. So these are the items which show up the most in ACR and ranked this tour. And so um, PD Piranha is right at the top. PD Piranha me suit in second place there. Interesting one with Mario SNES. He's not been that relevant or in the meta much at all. He doesn't have a plus skill. Um, obviously, he's coming in the uh, second week pipe. So it's you know typical thing that happens with uh, Nintendo is when um, we've got a tour where an item is in a pipe, then they tend to have the same courses um, being there so that they have some, you know, usability so that, you know, so that people want to pull the pipe. Um, but I don't really recommend investing into Mario SNES. SNES. Um, Silver Me Racing Suit is looking pretty strong this tour. And Fire Rosalina is obviously in a pack. Um, Birdo White is starting to show up more. Yoshi Kangaroo is probably my MVP this tour, I would say. Um, because I've got him leveled up and he shows up a lot of a lot um, this tour, which probably explains a lot of the boomerang as well as uh, in combination with PD Piranha and the me suit. Um, anything that sticks out to you guys on this list? Not really. Cool. Let's carry on and go to the carts. So in number one place, we've got the big hitbox new cart Piranha pipes which i'm jealous for anyone who's going into the pipe have you guys gone in and got the card uh along with pd prada i'm holding my rubies this tour i got the driver uh have not gotten the cart yet i uh from what i hear it has a pretty decent size hitbox too so if all you big hitbox uh guys <laughs> out there that want big cards then you gotta pull this pipe <laughs> what i'm about not you, telling Flo? anybody what to do just saying <laughs> Yeah, so I went into the pipe, but I didn't get it yet. So after for tennis, I got PD and I got the glider. So I think I will just stop there you're, uh, you're because stopped. the starting starting coverage is not that great. I'm also a little bit out of rubies after the last few tours, so uh, I could empty the pipe, but I I think I will rather save. Yeah, and then we've got the lightning streamliner exploding onto the scene. So it'll be interesting to examine the tracks a little bit later on. Um, 8 bit pipe frame and some of these other items which are showing up in the pipes. Um, some really interesting uh, carts showing up this tour. I say Tanuki is a strong tour for Tanuki cart, and Armored Riders looking stronger and stronger every tour. So, what might be one to look into as well? Um, so, yeah, let's move on to the gliders. Um, so, in the first place, we've got Piranha Plant Balloons, and then the 8 bit one up mushroom. Very strong glider. I've seen, um, I think. Uh, uh, Acquiesce in our in OGs, uh, who's um, from New Zealand as well. He has already taken this glider, I think, triple capped and leveled yeah, it up as well. So, yeah. yeah, so pretty insane. But I think that that will be potentially a really powerful glider in the future um, because it's pack locked right now. And then it's also um, 8 bit, which has had historically very good um, value. Um, and it's just a cool glider. Um, it's got great ACR value this tour. The secret scroll is the new one in the uh, in the special pipe, um, and then we've got um, wonderful wings showing up showing up quite well. Candlelight flight very strong this tour. Um, record set is starting to burst onto the scene a little bit more, which is quite interesting as well. Any, uh, and golden wings, of course, has to get a shout out. <laughs> any, <laughs> any, uh, any particular items that stand out on this list to you guys? Yeah, one thing, and that's the Crimson Crane, which has three ranked appearances, but there's only the three only appearances <laughs> in the whole tour, so that's really funny. Uh, yeah, yeah, it shows you the difference between investing for ACR and ranked, right? It's very different. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on, and um, we've got a change to the ticket time algorithm this tour. Uh, Flo, did you want to tell us all about that? Yeah, I think we have briefly mentioned it before when we were discussing the the, the list. 
So what we basically compute is an upgrade from one level and one cap to another level and another cap. And of course the, uh, the tickets needed are similar, but a little bit different. And just to factor that in correctly, I just decided that we do not just um, order the, the, the items based on the weighted scores, but on the weighted scores or the weighted gain per ticket. So this is um, what we will see now as a little change. It will not change the uh, ACR upgrade rankings uh, for the general, for the artificial account, but it will of, of course uh, change our lists uh, when we have a look at them. Nice. Yeah, I think this is a huge and really important addition because we had discussed, you and I, Flo, um, how some upgrades are going to make more sense just because it's less tickets, so it's a bit more efficient. Um, and so this is more now changing the algorithm to be more based on efficiency for your tickets and return on investment um, rather than just pure uh, you know, overall score that you might achieve. So I think the, the key difference might be that you know, if you're going in a specific tour, maybe you want to level up an item um, that's going to give you great, you know, value that particular tour. Um, but in general, you know, and in that case, you might take something like you did last tour flow, um, taking Ty Daisy from level one straight to level seven and triple capped. Um, but in other cases with, you know, just regular increasing the value on your account, um, definitely factoring in how efficient your usage of tickets is, is very important. Um, so as we go into the ACR, um, upgrade rankings now um, that what we've just discussed isn't really affected too much in here because this is all the same amount of cost per ticket so in here we can purely see the changes and the shifts with people uh, the items being buffed and what that's done to the upgrade rankings so firstly for the drivers in the top five place we've got um, gold me racing suit meowza yoshi kangaroo charging chuck and luigi vacation and then we can see yoshi gold egg has jumped up two places to place number nine satella views dropped down two to 11 volandam's jumped up to number 12 and then silver me racing suit and mario tuxedo have just kind of swapped places so it's a pretty static list um, these are the most probably interesting items um, for most people to look into um, and we will look specifically today, we're going to look at John Boy and mine and Flo's uh, upgrade rankings for our own accounts to see and compare how they might look in comparison. Uh, anything stand out to you here, guys, before we move on to the carts? All right. I think John Boy might have frozen, but we'll carry on. <laughs> Um, then as we move into the carts, we can see Jukebox and Cupid's Arrow holding up the one and number one and two spot. Armored Rider jumping up to uh, third place. Oh, we've just lost John Boy. I'm sure he'll jump back in in a moment. Yeah. Um, then we've got uh, Cactar and Prop Cart coming down two spots. And then the Yellow Off-Roader jumping up four places to place number six. So very strong there. Warrior Wagon also, I'm sure you'll be happy to see that jump up the list there, uh, Flo. Yes. <laughs> um, thing that you've invested in that item. Cool. And then, we've yeah. and then we've got the gliders. So we've got Golden Wings holding down the number one spot. Um, Candlelight Flight jumping all the way up six places to number two. And then we've got the Starry Great Sail. John Boy's back. <laughs> um, we've got the Starry Great Sale down one place to number three, and then the record set of jumping seven places all the way up to place number four. So getting some sneaky good uh, value and some good buffs there, the record setter. Eight-bit Fireflower looking stronger than ever. Um, wonderful Wings jumping up massively there. So uh, a huge and really interesting list, and um, I see that Sakura Origami Glider jumping up 24 spots into our top 15. So you know, it had a relatively slow start, but this was a paywalled um, glider. So it's an interesting one to see it um, gain some value. Any comments on the gliders flow? Yeah, as I mentioned before, so it's interesting to see they have some gliders that have this overlap on the on the new Piranha Plant slide tracks. So can light flight and Sakura Origami glider, I checked them, they have seven tracks overlap. So it's probably not wow. interesting to go uh, invest in both of them, but if you have one of them already at a high level, then you can just choose whatever fits you better. Very nice. All right. So welcome back, John Boy. Um, we're about to get into your upgrade rankings and tell you what your best items to upgrade are. So get excited. All right. <laughs> so this is where the Sorry fun... about that. My phone. It's so hot, my phone decided to overheat. Oh, 
You got it on your head, <laughs> now, have you? <laughs> uh, um, does my camera look okay? Can you see me okay? Yeah, you're all good. Okay. You're okay, all good, good man. Let's carry on. So here we go. Here is your uh, top drivers to look at investing into. So your number one uh, driver with uh, 39,000 score per ticket. So per ticket, you spend 39K in an annual uh, period. You would um, gain that much scoring potential is Yoshi Goldie. Does that surprise you? Um, it, it was uh, it was on the investment list um, <laughs> per se. So yeah, I can see no, that because you've was, already was, triple capped uh, it. Yeah, I was uh, I was actually planning on investing in it sooner, but you know, some things came up and I had to make some investments for ranked. <laughs> like Volendam, I had to Volendam. Is she on this list? Um, she is. She's actually not. your seventh best um, driver, and oh, yeah, I know you've just you. taken her from level one, so that's a really strong start there. Okay, I did cap her. Uh, I might put a. I, I still have some more cap tickets laying around. I might double cap something. I might either double cap Ninja Shy Guy or Volendam. I haven't picked, figured out which one, but according to this, I might just go ahead and put them on Ninja Shy Guy. Yeah, I mean, if you look at this list, so she's in seventh place. Ninja Shy Guy is in 13. Oh, you mean Pink Shy Guy Ninja? Pink, pink, pink oh, yeah, Shy cool. Guy Ninja, sorry. Cool. Yeah, yeah. He would definitely, so he's your number two option. Um, so the recommendation to take him from five and one to level seven and double capped. So obviously if you took him to level six and double capped or just kept him at level five and double capped him, then the, the scoring gain is going to be less. Uh, but there is still value in investing into him, even if that's incrementally. Um, so that's a, yeah, the ticket time says do it, <laughs> basically. <Ticket> um, time. <laughs> yeah, but um, you can see straight away that on the right-hand column, the number of tickets, you can see that Yoshi Gold Egg would only take five tickets to take him uh, to uh, level seven so that he's level seven and triple capped as he already is. So this is the most efficient thing to do for your account if you have five level tickets. Now, obviously caps and level tickets are different. So you might be out of level tickets right now. So now you're looking at which one is the best to cap. And in fact, that would be uh, Pink Shy Guy Ninja if you have 10 cap tickets. Um, so yeah, that's that would be um, absolutely the recommendation. Flo, would you add anything to that? Um, yeah, so uh, just just to add, so it would just cost five for the pike, uh, pink pink chunk and ninja, and also five for Rosalina Vondam. Uh, so maybe you can even split them up if you would have ten. Have ten. Um, um, what is not taken into account to ticket time yet is then of course future buffs or what. Uh, buffs uh, are able to collect. So Pink Shy Guy Ninja is a little bit older than Volendam, if I'm not mistaken. So um, yeah, whatever fits you better. I, I think both are good good options to double cap. So um, yeah. Might be which, which week of ranked you want to win <laughs> this week exactly. or next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know I've kind of got the same decision, but my decision is to save my ticket. So I won't be doing either but i'd love to invest into pink shy guy ninja just because i just love giant banana and i want a bit more variety in my account um so there we go that, john oh uh, that action counter sounds amazing when it's just going ding 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 <laughs> ding ding and they're all just dying behind you <laughs> yeah man so let's take a look at your carts now john boy and we've got um in number one place probably a little bit of a surprise for all of us here the comet tail okay <laughs> Um, so it it's, could be quite it's interesting. A, it's actually a really, it's a nice cart, and it covers all three of the 3DS Rainbow Roads, and you know those tracks for action counts are absurd. Yeah, and that might explain a little bit about why that would give you more value. But I can see that cart's already level seven and triple cap. So I guess it's come to the top of the list because it's only eight more tickets to level it up. You're already invested heavily into that item. Um, so, you know, it, it's basically, the list is basically saying, hey, keep looking at this item. This is, this is, you're using this item a lot. It appears a lot in ACR. So to invest into it further is less risky than maybe some more newer items when it comes to carts that don't appear as often or may not. Um, in second place is the Vampire Flyer, which might be a little bit more, you know, understood in the meta to be, a, you know, to be a meta item. 
um, which it seems that you're using that one quite a lot too, being that it's level seven and triple capped already as well. Um, Black Dozer, I know I'm invested in that item as well. So that's an interesting one there. And Prop Cart, I can see you've invested and that's, you know, uh, 10 level tickets to get to level seven and double cap. So that's quite an interesting one. Even maybe just to look at the double cap option, because uh, that would be only five tickets there. And then we've got Tanuki Cart. Anything to add on his carts flow? No, what, we're, what we see here is a very strong cart selection. What, of course, is missing are the ones that are already at level 8 triple cap because they cannot be further upgrade. Uh, so if I'm not mistaken, that's the yellow off row there. And I'm not sure about the second one. Do you Cactar. remember, John? Cactar, Cactar, yeah. Very nice. Very nice very combination. Nice. So, of course, those are not appearing, but the tracks are already covered. So if you have a high overlap with those, uh cards for example uh combo cruiser is not appearing on this list which uh might be due to the overlaps with the yellow off-roader uh so um but in general a very nice card selection i think uh it's it's definitely looking better than in Matt's and my account uh, <laughs> yeah a little it's bit very <laughs> strong very very strong you you've done a really good job with how you've invested in your cards john boy i can see the gain per ticket and the, even the weighted gains pretty low um, compared to what we might see on me and Flo's lists. So, well done. Um, let's move on well, to the... Group. Thank you. Sorry, there's a bit of lag on the call there, guys. Um, let's move on to the gliders. And in number one place uh, is the Galaxy Glider. So the recommendation to take that from level seven to level eight, it's already triple capped. And there's some very strong gliders on this list. So pretty much almost every single one of these is um, already level seven and triple capped. So definitely looking at some level eight options would be would make a lot of sense with your gliders now. Um, gliders tend to have a lot more courses than the carts. So taking them to level eight tends to be a, a more of an option these days. Um, what gliders do you have at level eight already? Oh, uh, hold on. Uh, Golden Wings at eight, uh, Black Great Cell at eight. Um, I'm gonna have to remember. I know those two for a fact. I think that's it. I think I had to look before because I was interested about the overlaps and so on. But those two are massive, of course. Yeah. yeah. Golden Wings level eight triple cap. That's um, that's pretty insane. <laughs> you must be using that. And every, Black and every... and Black Great Cell as well. Yep. Yep. So Galaxy Glider at the top of the list. Um, Tanuki Parafoil, an interesting one. Um, quite a, a, probably a different set of combination of gliders that you've got than I do, because I don't have that one invested, but I know that one has good coverage. Um, Glinton Glider, strong there. I know it's strong on my account too. Silver Star Shoot, doesn't have a lot of tracks, but it will be an optimal combination with your other items that you've got. And then Dragon Wings in the fifth place. So that, those are the recommendations. Uh, are you vesting into anything in the gliders this tour? Uh, I actually did the candlelight flight. Ah, nice. Uh, I, put a, I put a few tickets. I think I put, I think I put it for five. Yep. If I'm not mistaken. Nice. Um, because it's like the only glider I had on um, one of the Piranha <laughs> Plant cards, I think. Yeah, I would support that. I think it's a good glider now. It it wasn't probably it didn't have much coverage now, but now that it's got those two, that's um that's going to be hugely beneficial for for your account going forward. Uh -huh. All right, so those there we go. So those are your upgrade rankings. So all the best with your tickets. <laughs> uh, I know it's hard to save sometimes. So that's the mode I'm in. And let's move on to flow your upgrade rankings. So um, take us through your upgrade rankings and your thoughts on them. All right, so what we first see here now, so uh, for John, why we just did it once, the, the ticket time calculation, so we do not have any changes. And what we now see here, of course, are the changes uh, that are affected by ordering by gain and not by weighted score. So uh, you see some maps of jumps here. Of course, a few are because I invested into them, like the Tidress. Uh, but uh, yeah, what, what's basically happening is we have a few drivers that are already at level seven, like Yoshi Gold Egg, Pink Gold Peach. Um, so they are just eight tickets away because they're already triple cap. So they are going on top to the list because you just improve, in the case of Yoshi Gold Egg, 
21 tracks where you would go for a seven uh, triple cap driver to an eight a triple cap driver. So that's a massive uh, point. So that's why he's in first, Big Gold Beach on third, and Miaoze would need the cap tickets as well. But in uh, on average in the game per ticket, still uh, almost at the same level as Yoshi Goldick. Um, I think in general, there's, um, yeah, it's just the, the, the drivers that I have at six double cap, most of all. Um, and then we have some surprising ones, uh, like we have seen the last time Daisy Holiday here and Mario Samurai, but now there's also a non plus skill driver there, Cat Luigi, which just has <laughs> some coverage. Uh, so he has some gaps that we would fill in. Uh, there are only four, as you can see on the count, but um, yeah, if they are on ranked, that might still be an option to do so if you want to save some uh, tickets and rubies there. Yeah, he looks like he might be one of the, like the new Golf Mario or something like that. You know, one of these kind of uh, high coverage, non plus skill type drivers, which, you know, some people may invest into if they're not invested in plus skills. Um, cool. Interesting yep. list. Yeah. And Daisy Tidress exploding on the scene. Um, really interesting stuff. I think it would make sense because I know that the reason you probably haven't taken Miyaza to level eight and triple cap is it's just too many tickets. So it makes sense to not, even though he's got massive scoring gain, um, if you look at the weighted gain, it's still much stronger than all of the other options together. Um, but certainly in terms of ticket efficiency, you might be able to look at two options instead of just that one option if you look um, differently. And then we can go to your carts. Um, and I just put insane next to the Lightning Streamliner because it's it's literally debuting this tour, but it debuts at your seventh best cart to invest into. So, do you know why that might be? Uh, yeah, I can. I'm, I'm just not sure if uh, maybe there's a John Boy that he can just turn it from a little bit. Oh yeah, I think you might need to just go. Because I can't hear that. There's a. I think we can hear your aircon. <laughs> Ah, yeah, probably. Yeah, that's okay. Just to make sure, it's just just to make sure that we uh, are we good now. Uh, on the yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, sorry if about that. No, no worries. I think if that's if that's fine for next couple of minutes, and uh, yeah, we will keep it as is. So we were talking about the lightning streamliner. Um, as you can see, so of course it doesn't have that many tracks. I think it has eight or uh, nine right now with the level eight unlocked, and uh, you can see in the counts that they have five tracks where it would help me out already if I just level it up to level six double cap. And the reason why it is then already that high is because those uh, five tracks are uh, Piranha Plant Slide R where I have a level two card, Piranha Plant Slide T where I have a level one card, uh, Sky Garden where I have a level one card and Sky Garden T where I have no card at all. So those four tracks combined are just, uh, yeah, giving this high weighted score and that's why it's already at 11.7. So it would be amazing to pull for. Unfortunately, the week two pipe is really bad and I only have 340 rubies. So I'm probably will not go into it, but maybe I can, I can get to be really lucky and get a freebie or yeah. So let, let's see, but um, it's a nice start. Uh, unfortunately, I probably will not collect it, but um well, I, I have to look for other cards than for, for these tracks. Um, I mean, save those Rider. rubies for Armored Rider, right? <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, you know I, I do have a small suggestion. I, I, would just do a, I would just do a yellow temple, and that's <laughs> it. Just leave it at that. A yellow temple, because if, if you don't make an attempt, then you have zero chance. So at least if you do one temple, you have somewhat of a chance to get what you want. Yeah, so I would yeah. do one, I would do one ten pull and leave it. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you're not out that much. Just playing with fire. I will, I will think about it. Yeah. <laughs> if you it do depends a, also what's coming next to it. If you so. do a YOLO, please record it. <laughs> yeah, I will do so. <laughs> All right, and then yeah, Armored Rider. So uh, I mean, my suggestion is the opposite to John Boys is save your rubies and see if Armored Rider comes back like next tour or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. You know. You never I'm know. I'm expecting <laughs> like that, but uh, but riding right, rider would be amazing. So the, it has so many nice tracks. Only where it just replaces supers and it has a nice 
Hitbox and which can combine very well with Coinbox. So um, that's definitely a card I'm, I'm looking for. Excellent, man. Um, lots of other interesting stuff on here, but you probably will just move on uh, based on time. But good to see the white bruiser coming up in your rankings, being that um, you've invested in that. So it's still getting good value yeah. there. Um, and Dark Hot Rod jumping up is interesting as well. And I see Yellow Off Road as well. You've got a few that you don't own. So it's quite, quite an interesting list there. Um, moving on to your gliders, though. And we've got in the first place, we've got Golden Wings. Uh, Galaxy Glider in second place, the 8-Bit Mushroom in third place, uh, Dry Bowser Umbrella, and then Candlelight Flight. Um, so my key question I had for you, oh, and then the Sakura Origami Glider, with as we discussed these ones, um, you know, uh, coming on the scene, and then you'll see Tulip Corsage further down the list, jumping 72 places, uh, based on giving you seven courses. So really interesting buffs um there for these items this tour but i guess my question was were you planning on going in on the um any of these items i know you don't have them right now um but saving your rubies for some of these items to return um yeah i i just saw that i i had just added the, the slide but i forgot to uh, add the level so the piranha, piranha plant balloons I already ticked that I owned them because I collected them then after processing ticket time. Um, but um, yeah, of course, this was also changing further things. So basically, I applied ticket time when I did not uh, own the perennial plant balloons yet. And that's why the perennial plant balloons are appearing here, the tulip corsage, uh, the candlelight flight, and also the Sakura only gummy glider because ticket time just says, please, please, level up some gliders on this piranha <laughs> plant slide with our tracks and uh yeah one of those four options it should be now i have at least the the last one the piranha plant balloons so this could be one glider to level up i have no tickets right now because golden wings took everything but uh, yeah for the, for the it future, took everything but it's gonna give you everything <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. All right, we'll quickly go through my ones and then we're almost at the end, guys. So thanks for sticking with us. I know this um, episode, I hope you enjoyed it because there's a lot to, um, to the things we're going through today. Um, so really quickly um, in my rankings, you can see Miyaza is in the top place um, with only eight tickets to get into level eight. I know we say eight tickets, oh, that's a lot, but yeah, only eight tickets to get into level eight. Um, so Teleview, the recommendation there is an easy one because it's just a simple, uh, you know, 10 tickets to, to double cap. Uh, I think there might be a slight error there because it doesn't seem to pick up on the level tickets i'm not sure exactly what's happened there um but i have actually double it's from six to level six. Oh, okay no sorry it's only five tickets five tickets for um capping yeah sorry my, my mistake um for some reason i thought uh, 10 tickets to double cap um yeah so i have actually double capped him already um which was something the the only tickets i've spent recently um just because i, I just i knew that it was going to give me so many courses so i double capped him there um, Charging Chuck is sitting there in uh, third place. Luigi Vacation a little bit further down the list. King Boo Gold jumping up um, because, again, he does give me 18 courses there already um, as the unique coin boxer. So some interesting ones. Um, Volendam is probably the most interesting one to me on this list because um, 10 courses is a good number if I was to level uh, her up to double capped that's a very good that's that's what I'm interested in I'm looking for that kind of I guess budget budget covered coverage um, so 15 tickets for that would be between you know six uh, cap tickets and the remaining level tickets which will be nine uh, level tickets to get her to level six and double cap so that might be of interest to me um, but I'm gonna keep holding my tickets um, and then in terms of the carts for me, yellow off-roader jumping 12 places all the way to the number one spot, which is not surprising to me. I definitely want to be taking this one to level seven, um, seeing as it's already triple capped, that will only be five level tickets. So it's a really obvious upgrade. All the other remaining upgrades cost a lot more per ticket. Um, so therefore they, they make less sense. I think even though Jukebox is in the second place, I'd probably go with Armored Rider instead um, this is probably a more interesting cart to me in terms of the actual courses it covers. Um, I just prefer the courses that it covers, uh, whereas Jukebox has some good coverage, um, but some of the ones I'm not quite as much of a fan of. For example, I think it's got like Baby Park and a couple of these ones that, yeah, might um, not be quite as interesting, like Sky Garden. 
um, which to me, these are lower action count um, courses. And then in terms of the gliders, uh, Golden Wings, Silver Surf Master in number one and number two place there. Silver Starshoot dropping up dramatically. And that's because it would be only eight tickets, which would be the most uh, budgetary, easy thing to do in terms of level tickets to get that to level eight and triple cap as well. Um, I think I would probably do some other things before that. Um, like for example, maybe maybe to triple cap the Golden Wings and the Silver Surf Master. Of course, level tickets and cap tickets being very different things. So, um, you know, there, there might be some better options, like for example, taking the candlelight flight to six and double capped, which is, um, you know, uh, 10 tickets there, which is pretty, pretty easy to achieve. Um, and it's jumped up 18 places with those piranha plant. Uh, slide uh, course buffs this tour so some really interesting ones I still want to double cap the 8-bit star um, so lots of options of things that I want to do in the future with um, my gliders that's been it from the upgrade rankings guys I hope you enjoyed that um, there and we'll just quickly talk about our, uh, our game plan this tour if we're making any upgrades or anything like that I imagine Flo you're going to be in ticket saving mode like me yeah, no, I, w I won't attempt top 10 right now. Not, not too hard. To, uh, top 10? So, oh, let's go. <laughs> no, 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 just kidding. So, uh, uh, it, that's, of course, impossible with uh, Gold Pass only yeah. or Gold Pass with minimal expenses. But at least uh, top 100 is now done, and I, I think I will do it at some point, but probably not in the near future. So um, I'm in ticket-saving mode. So um, the only upgrade I will probably do is then for SNS Ghost Valley. One RT. I will either take King Boo to level seven, or I will invest in two PD because I, surprisingly, I already have uh, eight driver high end tickets. I ha had four left over from the last tour because there was just no investments that made sense. And then this tour we uh, get go, get a lot of driver high end level tickets, so that's why I could think about the uh, leveling PD up directly to level six. So that would be the other option. Uh, apart from that, probably no further upgrades, except from when I would get lucky and get the lightning <laughs> streamliner. <Let's... laughs> yeah, well, good luck. Good luck on those pipes. Yeah, that um, King Boo, man, double feature. That's a really, really interesting <laughs> thing, this tour. And I know you're probably using Ty Daisy on uh, Choco yeah. Island 2T. Um, oh yeah, you are. Yes, um, but for my account actually right now, because I haven't invested in her, actually King Boo at level seven triple cap is my best option right now. It's quite interesting. Um, what are you using on that course, John Boy? I'm actually, I actually, uh, I could either use um, Ninja Shy Guy or King Boo. And I think the Lucky Seven or Boomerang Driver is actually better on that track than Coin Box. Yeah, it's a lot because of tight turns, eh? Tight turns, jumps, and also there's a r extra box trick on that track you can only do if you're trying to stall, and it doesn't really work very well with coin box drivers, so it helps benefit the Lucky 7 boomerang drivers more. Nice. And if you want to stall, it's a lot easier to stall on that track because it's so wide, you can just drive left <laughs> and let everybody pass you. Yeah, there's your ranks so, top tip, guys. Go win ranked with that. Um, those 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 tidbits. Um, and then if we jump to my one there, um, you can see my estimate's quite a bit lower than flows, which I find quite interesting, probably because of Daisy Tide dress, um, and some, maybe some other items as well. Um, but I did have a play around to see with because now that I have a few more tickets, I was looking to see is top 100 a possibility. So I computed some potential upgrades on the left there. Um, and you can see the estimate, 100% uh, estimate before and after. Um, and with spending basically every single one of my tickets, I can increase, you know, almost 100,000 points. Um, however, it's nowhere near where it needs to be for top 100. So I just find it really interesting to look into what it takes um, in terms of investment within one particular tour. And you can see that what's really hurting me is um, Volendam only at level one, even after I've computed my best upgrades, I've still got level one drivers. And also um, going back to the plus skill distribution this tour, I've got some really funny ones because I've got I think it was, I've got, I think it's four non coin, uh, non plus skill uh, courses. 
but they're terrible. One is Mushroom Cannon with Peachette. One is uh, Bomb Bomb Cannon with Birdo Black. Um, one is, what were the other two? I'm struggling to remember. I think one was Yoshi's Egg, which is okay. That one is okay. And then I had one other one. I'm just trying to see it here on the list. Um, I don't remember what it was, but it was certainly not a not a fan favorite uh, non plus skill. So um, yeah, some interesting ones. And I was like, do I really want to be going for a you know really good high quality runs with Peachette? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so um, yeah, you know. Um, I think the the top 100 estimate was quite a bit higher. Um, so definitely I will be waiting for the right tour um, to do a top 100 run sometime in the future. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for everyone watching all the way through the episode. I hope you enjoy really long form content. You know, I know I listen to some of these episodes with my screen off on my phone playing YouTube in the background and things like that. So um, hope you enjoy the sound of our voices and um, a massive thank you firstly to you, Flo, and to you, John Boy, for attending this episode and um, for your input. I really appreciate the support on the channel and what we're doing here is um, I think it's really cool and a great conversation. We love ACR. Um, so a huge thank you to you guys. Thank you to Larry98, to um, DKR for the DKR spreadsheet, uh, Rashid and Nadina for the ACR projections. Um, we used images from the ACR bot. So thank you to the guys behind that, um, Heriosity and um, Jimmy, the dev behind that. Um, and to Lev, Bam Gerbs and Rockenbugger and MKD Ben for their sheets, which we used to uh, get some of the data for ticket time. Um, and then we've got some recommendations here. So some other resources in the community we recommend you check out. Guys, did you want to say um, thank you to any, for anyone in the community? Any shout outs? Or do you want to say um, farewell? I just want to say, Matt and Flo, I appreciate you guys having me on and um, enjoying this uh, conversation. Um, Whoa. <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> There was a train in the background. Yeah, I heard that. So, uh, I, the train tracks right there. Oh my god, that's embarrassing. Anyway, I, I you know, I, I really appreciate what you guys do, and you know, we're doing this right and helping the community. Uh, you guys, you know, with your investment strategy and these videos that you're coming up with, and ticket time, that is a great tool. It's really, really groundbreaking you know, considering we're just, all we're doing is streamlining the utilization of tools we already have. And it, it seems to be helping a lot, you know, everybody in the discord server, you know, and we're trying to reach more people in the community with it as well. So I appreciate you guys. And I appreciate you being a part of this uh, OG team with me. And uh, we'll just keep building, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for your kind words. Flo, over to you. Yeah. Um, I also appreciate that we can do this content that we found each other uh, to, to discuss on the OG server, which is uh, uh, there, there's a massive amount to do. So thanks to John Boy, John Girl, of course, as well. Uh, Matt is also now involved uh, as, as a leader. So uh, thanks to you guys. Um, then, as Jomo mentioned, of course, ticket time. I hope to finish it uh, in the next week. So, um, oh, so we, good. we I, I think we, we plan to do maybe a few, um, a shorter <laughs> explanation video, something like that, <laughs> how to use it. And um, yeah, we will keep you updated if you're interested. And um, yeah, I hope for more ACR content in the future. Excellent. Well, thank you everyone for watching guys. And um, we really appreciate the support. So make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and get involved. Um, you know, it's exciting times. Um, I'm really excited for Ticket Time to fully launch into the community. We've had lots of uptake with um, people in, in, in the OG team uh, compute their own upgrades. So it's really interesting when you see what your, uh, you know, what, what can actually help you in ACR. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I really hope you enjoyed the, um, some of the stuff we discussed around um, action count strategy. Um, but um, have a great tour, everyone. Take care and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. See